So what do women want? Okay, this is of course critical. This gets back to that key of sexual selection theory, intersexual selection. And I teach a course in human mating, I, I actually teach a course in uh, human sexuality and also a course in the psychology of human mating. And I, and I put my class through this exercise. I tell the class, and at the moment I'm teaching it, there are 500 students in the class, and I say, what do women want? Just tell me what women want and I'll write it on the board. And so they start. Well, I want a mate who's kind, who's intelligent, who's healthy, who's uh, physically fit, who's athletic, who has good hygiene. And they start going through this list, and I start at one end, I, do, I fill up five blackboards of things that women want, and it gets even more complicated. So it's not just that women want a lot of things, they want certain amounts of this, of each quality. So they say, I want a guy who's uh, physically fit and muscular. And I say, you mean like, uh, like, like muscle bound, like Arnold Schwarzenegger used to be when he won the Miss, uh, Miss, uh, Mr. America, or whatever it was, Miss, Mr. Universe contest? I said, well, no, not that muscular, okay? Um, kind, so you want a guy who's kind, so like a guy, he's, he like takes his paycheck at the end of every month and, and gives it to all the homeless people. Well, no, not that kind. Um, <laughs> So, you know, so they, they want certain amounts and not others, and it changes depending on time of month, uh, the mate value of the female, et cetera. So, so in fact, what women want is very complicated, and that's why men have been struggling for so many decades or centuries trying to figure it out. So, uh, now, men vary, of course, in thousands of ways, and constants don't count uh, in mating. So no woman, as far as I know, has ever looked at a guy and said, man, this guy's really hot, he has an opposable thumb, he walks bipedally, he speaks a language. No, constants don't count, they are invisible. All that women notice are the differences. And, and that's because the differences are the only things that matter. Okay, now of course, if, if the man was not bipedal or didn't have an opposable thumb, probably would be a member of a different species and that would be a deal breaker right there. Um, but constants don't count. So, women face many problems in mating. They have to identify the relevant attributes. Um, they have to assess men on the relevant attributes. So you can want, let's say, a guy who's high in status, but how do you know he's high in status? They have to assess um, they, that, and one way in which women do that is they look at the attention structure. The attention structure is highly correlated with status. Namely, the high status males are those to whom the most people pay the most attention. So one of the things that women look at is who's attending to this guy. And you can see this if you ever go to a meeting, I see it in faculty meetings, but any kind of business meeting or, or anything, sometimes like some people draw more attention than others. And someone will say something, that will be a low status guy, and he'll say something, everyone will just kind of ignores them and goes to the next person. Okay, so the attention structure is highly correlated with status. Uh, they have to accurately identify their own mate value, and men do too, of course. If you inaccurately, so if you are, let's say, uh, this is a female colleague who complained to me. Uh, she said, how come all the guys I'm interested in are not interested in me, but then I have all these other guys who are pursuing me, and I'm not interested in them at all? And so what I told her is I said, you are an eight lusting after tens and being sought after by sixes. <clears throat> and she said that single piece of information was more helpful to her than the three years of psychotherapy that she had had previously to try to figure out what the problem was. <laughs> but if you, if you try to attract mates who are too discrepant from you, now you don't want to settle for someone who's too low, but if you're shooting for someone who's way out of your range, so Scarlett Johansson just got divorced, or just announced her divorce, so she's on the market now, and uh, so any of you guys who think that you're in her range, go for it, right? But most of us are not in her range, and we, we likely would be a losing proposition, uh, I guess, maybe not for Jason Capital. Um, <clears throat> Uh, targeting men in the, mate, in the relevant mate value range, okay, oh, and avoiding deception. So this is a problem, okay, we know that men sometimes lie. 
the study, we, and we know how, on what dimensions they lie. Basically, they lie, they lie about things that they think women want. Uh, and so on internet dating sites, for example, and this is what I tell women, so guys exaggerate their income by about 20%. They, uh, they exaggerate their height, not by a lot, so you don't have a guy who's 5'5 five, five and says that he's 6'4", but men tend to round up a bit. So if a guy's 5'10", they, yeah, six feet, around six feet. They round up a bit. Uh, women also deceive, by the way. They, they deceive about their weight, uh, and then, of course, both deceive by posting, you know, pictures that are from 10 years ago, uh, et cetera. So, so both men and women have to worry about deception on the mating market. Uh, and, um, uh, and another thing men lie about is the depth of their feelings. So this is, uh, hi, I've been noticing around campus, I love you, I feel we're lifelong mates, now can we have sex? Um, well, no. Uh, guys uh, exaggerate their love and depth of their feelings in order to have sex. I know that won't shock or surprise you. Th they prefer economic resources. So uh, I actually gave a talk in LA, uh, not Orange County, but LA proper about a year ago, and my host picked me up in a Lamborghini. And one of the interesting things was that all the guys, like the baggage handlers and everyone else, wanted to get a selfie of them standing in front of the Lamborghini, which I'm sure then they posted on their Facebook page or their internet, oh yeah, this is me, a Lambo. Uh, but women do like economic resources. Uh, they, they are attracted to it. So when you see a frumpy looking guy who's not that good looking and he's with a very attractive woman, what is the inference you're gonna make about what qualities he has? Well, he's gonna have status and he's gonna have resources, uh, almost invariably. And I'm not saying she's a gold digger, but <clears throat> those are the data. <clears throat> women do value financial resources and it's reasonable that they do. So ancestral women who did not place a premium on the resources a man was both able and willing to provide, they and their children would have suffered in survival currencies uh, relative to those women who said, yeah, I want a guy who's a good provider. Uh, ambition and industriousness, these are qualities that are correlated. So th uh, that uh, older gentleman that Jason put up earlier, uh, one of the things is uh, 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 drive, ambition, hard work, Okay, these things are statistically correlated with making more money, and women value them. Confidence is another thing. Okay, people, animals accept each other at their own words, so to speak. Okay, now we know that peop, some people are, are, are arrogant, so women don't like arrogance, okay, but they like confidence. So confidence, confidence is definitely an aphrodisiac. Uh, status. Um, mate value, of course, people tend to pair off on mate value. So I mentioned that just a minute ago, but people tend to pair off on overall mate value. So the sixes with the sixes, the eights with the eights, the tens with the tens. Uh, and so who gets what they want are those who embody the qualities that the members of the opposite sex desire. Uh, and of course, there are men deceive about their status and resources. Women prefer slightly older men, okay, generally not ancient men. So it, where I, I'm, I'm in uh, Texas at the moment, University of Texas, and there was a, we had a famous case, I'm sure some of you have heard of her, Anna Nicole Smith. Uh, she was 26 years old and she married a guy who was 89 years old, happened to be a billionaire. I'm sure it was true love though. Uh, and then she met an untimely des demise. Uh, he, he died about 18 months later. And then she and her, his sons fought over the inheritance and and then she ended up dying. Uh, but as a general rule, women who are 26 don't think 89-year-old men are the most attractive men in the universe. But they do uh, value somewhat older men. And so you do see things like uh, Harrison Ford uh, still has, has uh, mate value, and, and he's, he's uh, uh, mated with uh, Callista Flockhart, who's about 25 years younger. Oh, I think I actually have some more recent examples on that. Uh, so, yeah, so well, <laughs> two of these Hollywood couples don't last 
as long as some other couples, so Johnny Depp and uh, Amber Heard are now divorced. Uh, I guess Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie are in the process of getting divorced. So, so if you think you're a 10, there, there are some potentially attractive women on, coming on the market. Scarlett Johansson, uh, et cetera. Okay, I already did that. Dependability and stability is something that women value. So guys who are too labile, uh, too erratic, um, too flaky, women don't want that. Uh, athletic prowess, okay, is very valued. So, uh, so women want a man who is not gonna be easily downed by other men. Love and commitment, okay, in long-term mating. In short-term mating, they don't care about love and commitment. Although, uh, as I alluded to a minute ago, one of the strategies that men do to gain short-term sexual access is to convey long-term intention. So that's one way in which men deceive women. Um, willingness to invest in children uh, is another one. So uh, I actually thought of starting a business. Uh, women really like a guy who's interacting positively with a baby. And I thought, he'd like, rent a baby business. But then I thought, okay, that's, that's not gonna work, practically speaking. But then I thought, ah, rent a puppy. Okay, that would work, because women, it's, parasitizes the same evolved psychology. Women see a guy interacting positively with a puppy, big, big sign. It's a cue that this guy is gonna be really a, a good dad. 